gentlemen, you are tuning on live to KCG live stream. Your name is strength. You are all welcome back. Your name is power. A strong tower makes me say. We just want to take two minutes to worship the Lord. Don't let anything take your attention. Just devote two minutes of your time to worship God. We want to prepare our heart even as we go into the presence of God. Everything is well with you. The room is filled with the presence of God. The man of God is on fire. the praise rise nobody like him say it unto him thank you for his message he is God ready the man of God is ready and he's on fire today your life is not going to be the same Good morning, Mark Wesley. Good morning, Monica. Good morning, Mariam. Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning, Annika. Good morning, Alexander. Good morning, Monica. Good morning, Mimi. Good morning, Mr. Imano. Good morning. Rue. Good morning to everyone. Mr. Philip, good morning. Victor, good morning. Suzanne, good morning. Kayla, good morning. God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in. The man of God is ready. Oh, 
Praises go up, blessings come down. Oh, we exalt you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in this day. Somebody lift up your voice, give him praise. You are alive today. Your families are alive today. Your children are alive today. Lift up your voice and give him glory. What the enemy meant it for evil. God has turned it around for your good. Why well, don't you lift up your voice and worship? Give him worship that he deserves. Give him worship that do him. Oh, we worship you, Father. Maruko Sabran Takaleba. Nobody like you, oh God. On earth, nobody like you. In heaven, nobody like you. On the earth, nobody like you. We worship you, oh God. Indeed, you are our glory and the lifter of our heads. Somebody lift up your voice. Worship him. He created us to give him worship. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. Laruklum Zanima Kataya. En Prado Sabrakito Mahadia. Rento Abunta Abarika Du Zebeya. Nariklendo Okorimatika Zute. We worship you, Father. There is nobody like you, Lord. There is no one like you, O oh God. You rule and you reign in the affairs of men. You reign in majesty, O oh God. Oh, we worship you, O oh God. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the unchangeable changer. You are the unsearchable searcher. You are a good God. You are a faithful God. You are a glorious God. No one like you, O oh God. In all the earth, O oh God, we have said throughout the whole world, we have never found anyone so gracious, so merciful, so kind, and so good like you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Come on, lift up your voice. And give him praise. Give him praise. He has kept you alive. He has watched over your children. He has watched over your life. Your going out is blessed. Your coming in is blessed. The Lord has preserved you. Lift up your voice. Give him worship. Give him worship. We worship you, Father. Ranto okoribati gazaya. Emprado sepra kapa. Somebody help me to worship him. Lift up your voice. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his place shall continually be in my mouth. Ron sakadi bahaya. Rema tulebe kapaya. What a privilege and an honor. Oh, to worship at your throne. To be called into your sanctuary as your own. Indeed, you are holy. Indeed, you are mighty. Indeed, you are glorious. We worship you. We honor you. Be thou exalted. Ranta agaribatia. Let our worship this morning rise onto your throne. Let our worship this morning come to you as a sweet smelling savor. In the name of Jesus, oh, someone lift up your voice. Give him praise. Give him worship. Give him glory. We worship you. We worship you. We bow before you. We bow before you. We bow before you. We worship you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Oh, lift up your voice. Don't stop. Let your spirit give him praise. Let your spirit man worship him. Ran to Kuzanima Kataya, Aprendo Praka Dukazaya, Lepro Dam Brakataya, your protection over our lives, your protection over our family, your protection over our children. You are good, you are good, you are good. Because when the enemy came in like a flood, you lifted a standard against his activities. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but your word has taught us that you will deliver us from them all. We thank you for your deliverance. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your preservation. Oh, thank you for the blood 
that is speaking over our lives. We worship you. We honor you, Father. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Somebody don't stop. Love him. Love on him. Love on him. Love on him. He's a good God. He's a faithful God. He's a glorious God. He's a wonderful God. He's a powerful God. We all exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. King of glory. Take your place. Take your place this morning. In our homes. Take your place. In our hearts. Take your place. In our minds. Take your place. In our thoughts. Take your place. We worship. We worship. We bow before your throne. We join the 24 elders in heaven and we sing holy, holy unto you, for you are holy. What a privilege, what an honor to stand before your throne. We worship your Father. Bran toki zalaba, aduni mi kaprandu kapaya, rain tokuri mi kapa. Receive all the praise, receive all the glory, receive all the honor, Lord. Ran di kupari We bless you, Father. We enthrone you, Father. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. You deserve all the worship. The essence of day. The I am that I am. The beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega. The ruler of the earth. The ruler of the heavens. We worship you. We worship you. Blessed be to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world. We give you praise. We honor your name. Blessed be to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good. Father, you are good. You are good. You are good. Your kingdom has no end. We worship you. Blessed be to your name. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. Take all the honor. Take all the adoration. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Spirit of God. We bless you. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. This is the day that the Lord has made. The Bible declares that we shall be, shall be glad and rejoice in this day. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. I will bless the Lord at all times. In good times, I will bless him. In worse times, I will bless him. In bad times, I will bless him. Because he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you, Lord, for such a beautiful day. You have made us part of. Take all the glory and take all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Brethren, good morning. And uh, it's good also to see you. Uh, I know that people are wondering, what is wrong with Pastor's beer? <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, I've, I've decided to have a new look. <laughs> Amen. But thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, it's always a blessing to come your way. I want to take this time to thank all of you for Friday. Uh, Friday was a very, very difficult time for all of us. But I thank God that the Lord saw us through. I want to take this time to thank every member of KCT uh, for being part on Friday. And I also want to thank the family 
of Pastor Dave, especially uh, Ryan and Aiden and their mother. They've been very, very wonderful for us to give our pastor a befitted barrier. I also want to thank Rokshi. Uh, it was very, very emotional, but I thank God that the Lord was able to hold all of us together. I believe that this is the beginning of great things to come. This has not break us, but this has made us stronger than before. Our faith is lifted. Our confidence is strong because we know where our pastor has gone. This is the hope we have in him. Thank you so much for being part on Friday. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. In Jesus' name. I just want to take this time to encourage all of you. Something new and something good has begun. Something new, something good has begun. And I want all of us to be part of what the Lord is doing. In Jesus' name. I'm coming to share briefly the word of God. Uh, this week I was just meditating on the word. And the Lord spoke to me and said, Go and tell my people to hope again. To hope again. In other words, don't lose hope. Hope again. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father Lord, I thank you. I give you praise and I give you glory. Thank you, Lord, for your word that is anointed to build us up and to strengthen us. The entrance of thy word bring it light and give it understanding to the simple. I pray, O oh God, each and every one that has tuned in to hear me under the sound of my voice, I pray that may their life never be the same. Strengthen them. Speak to their hearts. Bring a restoration in every aspect of our lives. Do what no man can do this morning and take all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hope again. The Lord has sent me to tell us hope again. I don't know what has come to affect your hope in God. But the Lord has sent me this morning to tell us hope again. Hope again. When you look at the world today, we began this year and we had so many expectations. We had so many hopes. There are a lot of things we, are, we were planning to do. There are a lot of great plans but it looks like what is happening all over the world, everything has come to standstill. And you begin to question yourself, what is happening? What has happened to my dream? What has happened to my vision? What has happened to the plans that I want to achieve in life? And it looks like all hope is gone. Businesses have shut down. So many things have shut down. Some of us, You've lost your job. Some of us, you have lost so many things. You have lost loved ones. And it looks like everything has come to a standstill. But God is telling me this morning to tell you, don't lose hope. Hope again. Don't lose hope. Hope again. Because your hope in God is very, very powerful. Your hope in God is very powerful. It is your hope that fuels your faith. Can I say it again? It is your hope that fuels your faith. It's like going to buy a car without petrol or without oil. The car is your faith, but without hope, which is the oil or the fuel, the car cannot run. So even though your faith is very powerful, actually the Bible says, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. But I've come to understand 
that without hope, your faith will not receive the fuel to your car. So faith is important, but hope is what you need so that your faith can keep on running. Look at how the Bible puts it. In Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, I read from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11, I read from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11, from verse 1. This is very powerful. This is very powerful. It said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Have you seen that? The evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith, your faith is a substance of things hoped for. Hope for. So your faith is connected to your hope and it is your hope that causes your faith to run. Somebody get this. Your faith is so powerful but without hope you cannot be able to run your faith. So the Bible says faith, now faith is the substance, tangible, touchable, things hope for. So your hope strengthens your faith to be able to run. So don't give hope. Don't give up on hope because I believe Hope has been designed to take you to your next level. Let me read another scripture. Let me read another scripture. Romans chapter 5. Let's go to Romans chapter 5. This is going to be very interesting. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. I read from verse 2. From verse 2. From verse 2. Romans chapter 5, I read from verse 2. Are you there? He said, but we are sure. Sorry, Romans chapter 5 verse 2. Sorry. He said that by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. He said, by whom also we have asset, access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Hallelujah. And he said that, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation wicked patient and patient experience and experience hope. Oh, hallelujah. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given unto us. Hallelujah. 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 It says that any time you put your faith at work. You must be able to have patience. Because patience will work out something we call experience. And experience will give you hope. Hallelujah. The challenges of life, the tribulations, the storms of life has been designed to kill your hope. I have told you, it is your hope that fuels, that strengthens your faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God is telling me to tell us this morning, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Because your hope in God is working something called patience. Patience will give you experience. And experience will give you hope. I prophesy over somebody's life. Whatever has come to kill your hope, I declare your hope is coming back. Your power is coming back. Your grace is coming back. 
Your joy is coming back. Your comfort is coming back. Your peace is coming back. Somebody shout hope. Shout I have hope in the name of Jesus. The question is, what is hope? What is the meaning of hope? Hope simply means to trust in, to wait for, mm, to expect something beneficial in the future. Hope means to trust in something, to wait for something, to expect something beneficial in the future. And myself, I define hope is the power to hold on until your change comes. Hallelujah. The power, your hope gives you power to hold on until your change comes. Receive that power. Receive that power of hope that you will not be shaken. You will stand until you see the change. It doesn't matter what has come after your hope. I prophesy over your life, your hope will not be shaken. You will stand still until you see your change come. Receive the change that is coming. I pray that God will strengthen you and empower you. For I hear a sound of change. I hear a sound of change. Lift your hopes up. Lift your hope up. Because I can sense an abundance of change that is coming in your home, in your life, in the life of your family, in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, I have hope. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was looking at the Greek word for hope. And it says, hope means in Greek, it means elpizo, which means confident expectation. Confidence expectation. You are confident in what you expected. And Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, it said, we are confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work will bring it to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Whatever the Lord told you from January up to this time, I don't care whether COVID-19, whether coronavirus or not, I prophesy, be confident of this very thing, that God, your God, my God has begun a good work in us, in KCT, in our families, in our lives. And I believe he will bring it to pass until Jesus appears. I said Jesus has dispatched the miracle, the blessing that you need. All that you need, lift your hopes up. Lift your hopes up because I believe that after this, is set and done. You will not run. You will not walk. You will fly. You will fly like an eagle. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. Confident expectation. Confident expectation. Ah, hallelujah. Confident expectation. When you believe in hope, your hope will connect you to patience and endurance. Your hope will connect you to patience and endurance. This is what hope does. When you are hoping so, for something, when you are hoping for something, you have patience. You have the ability to endure because you know, come what may, it doesn't matter how long it takes because I have hope. I will surely get that which I'm looking for. The Lord has sent me to tell you, hope again. Hope again. Your hope is connected to your patience and your endurance. Hope again. Don't allow anything to take away your hope. When you read the book of Romans chapter 5, 
Romans chapter chapter 8 rather. Romans chapter 8. Let me show you something. Verse 25. Romans chapter 8. Verse 25. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. Verse 25. He said, but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Have you seen that? Your hope is connected to your patience. Even though you have not seen it, even though God has spoken over your life, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that for you. This year, when you look at what is happening and when you look at what God has said, it looks like they are contradicting. But I've come to tell us, the Bible say, but if we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Even though I don't see it, I know that because God has spoken, I will hold on because I know with hope I will see it come to pass. That is what Hebrews said. Faith is the substance of things. Hope for evidence of things. No sin. The fact that I don't see it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Because the things that you see are made of things which are not seen. So when I lift up my hopes up, I will wait because I know it shall surely come to pass. David said, in all my days will I wait till the promise appear. I prophesy over your life. Wait, wait by hope because what with God has said, everything that God has said, I'm telling you today, it shall surely come to pass. Your eyes will see it. I said your eyes will see it and your heart will rejoice. Because you have hope, you will wait for it. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. I want us to pick up a character studies. When you read the book of Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Hallelujah. I read from verse 17. Is a story about Abraham. Abraham, the Lord gave Abraham a promise. He said, Abraham, I will make you the father of many nations. At that time, Abraham was 75 years old when the promise was given to him. I want us to read this from verse 17. Look at what the Bible says. Oh, hallelujah. He said, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed and even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope. Everything was against his hope. Everything was contrary to what God has said concerning Abraham. But Bible said that who against hope believed in hope. In other words, everything around him was telling him, Abraham, even though God has spoken, this is impossible. But Abraham did not allow the challenges, the circumstances to define what God has said concerning his life. So Bible said that who against hope believed in hope. Brothers and sisters, there are things that will come not after anything but after your hope. Because I have told you, when you have hope, it doesn't matter what you face. It doesn't matter what come against you. You will have the patience to endure and wait for the time to come. So things will be designed by the devil to come against your hope. But Abraham, our father, everything was against his hope. But he stood for what he believed in. He stood for his hope. 
and Bible says, amazing. This is so good. Whom against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Look at this. He said, and be not weak in faith. What's this? Be not weak in faith. Why was Abraham not weak in faith? Even though things seem not to be working. Because Abraham never allowed his hope to be taken. Because I've told you, your hope is the one that fuels your faith. When your hope is entered, your faith is strong. So though things came against his hope and he stood and battled for his hope, Bible says Abraham was not weak in faith. Abraham was not weak in faith. Is somebody listen to me? Mm. Be not weak in faith. Verse 19. He considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about 100 years old. The promise was given when Abraham was 75. Abraham, the Lord spoke, I will make you your fa the father of many nations. Abraham was 100. Things are falling apart. But Abraham kept his hope. Everything came against his hope. But because his hope was strong, Abraham was not weak in faith. So even though the promise was given to Abraham at the age of 75, in 100 years, Abraham considered not his body to be dead. In other words, Abraham did not allow his circumstances, his surroundings to determine the promise of God over his life. I prophesy over your life. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I feel in my spirit there are things that God has spoken over your life and the situations, the challenges of life is speaking to you and telling you it will not come to pass. But I prophesy, if you hold on to your hope, I see that miracle coming to your house. I see that blessing coming to your family. I see that breakthrough coming to you. If you believe it, shall I receive it? Shall I receive it? Shall I receive it? Like Abraham received his promise. So I pray over your life. Your faith will not be weakened. The things you are going through will not kill your hope. I see your hope rising. I see your hope rising. I see your hope rising. In the name of Jesus. Abraham was no weak in faith. Because his hope fueled his faith. He did not consider his body dead at the age of 100. Never yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He said, he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Have you seen that? He staggered not. The challenges came, yes. The storm came, yes. But the challenges and the storm did not move him from what God has said. Bible said that he was strong in faith. Why was he strong in faith? I have told you, Abraham held on to the hope of the promise that God has said concerning his life. So because he held on to his hope, he was strong in faith. So when the wind came, when the storm came, he was not staggered. He did not stagger. He did not give in. He did not become weak. He was strong in faith. I prophesy, your strength is coming back. Your power is coming back. Your anointing is coming back. In the name of Jesus, whatever has come after you, after your children, after your life, after your head, I declare right now, your strength is coming back because your hope is lifted. Hope again. Hope again. 
hope again, hope again. The devil cannot take your hope. Your blessing will not be taken because your hope is lifted to receive the promise. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, I feel the anointing right now. Somebody begin to lift up your voice. Begin to pray. Oh, Masukete Baha. Every promise, every promise, every promise you have spoken over our lives, over our families, over those that are watching in this live stream, I speak into every home. Strengthen their hope. Let them hope again. Let the spirit of hope be released, be released, be released upon us. Rabba Sukapaya. Oh, somebody pray that your hope will not fail. Your hope will not quench. In the name of Jesus, it is your hope that will fuel your faith. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse, verse 21. He said that, And being fully persuaded that what he had promised who God he was able also to perform it Abraham was not halfly persuaded Abraham was fully persuaded that is what hope does to you when you hope for something your faith is lifted and when your faith is lifted to a level, nothing can convince you. Nothing can change your mind. Abraham was fully persuaded. Even though everything around him, including his body, is saying that this is impossible because of his hope that fueled his faith, he was fully persuaded that that which God has promised shall surely come to pass. I pray over you, be persuaded by these promises that God has given to you. Don't let anything take it away from you. Has the Lord said it? It shall surely come to pass. Why? Because his word, his word will never return back to him void. It will go to accomplish the purpose of which it was sent. So Abraham was fully persuaded that that which God has promised she has surely come to pass. The Lord is able to perform it. I prophesy over somebody's life there shall be a performance by this year is over. There shall be a performance. In fact, I decree it is starting from today. There shall be a performance in your life. Every prayer you have prayed, I see those prayers being answered because there shall be a performance in your life. Verse 22 And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone. Have you seen that? That it was imputed to him. 24 But for us also whom to whom it was to whom it shall be imputed to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead let me read again but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. These things were not written for Abraham alone. It was written that we will learn from our father Abraham. If Abraham believed and it was counted upon him as righteousness even also if we believe on the promises of God, if we faint not, if we don't allow our hope to be destroyed, 
if you don't allow our faith to be destroyed, the Lord is saying, even us also, it will be counted upon us as righteousness. And Bible said that these things were written also, that we also will learn from that. I came to tell us this morning, your hope in God will fuel your faith. Your hope is the fuel that fuels your faith. Your hope will cause you to have patience and endurance regardless of what is going on. Your hope is always connected to your ability to wait until your change comes. Confident expectation. When you are confident in expecting something to happen, nothing moves you. Abraham staggered not. Abraham wavered not. Abraham did not have two minds. Is it going to happen? Is God going to do it? How is it going to work? No. Abraham was persuaded beyond his circumstances, his challenges, the storm. Did not even consider the deadness of his condition and even that of his wife. But Bible said that he was strong in faith. He was strong in faith because Abraham never gave up on his hope. The Lord has sent me to tell somebody here, don't lose hope. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. When God says something, when God gives you a promise, the Bible said that he watches over it. He watches over it to perform it. When you look at January up to this time, it looks like all hope is gone. In God, when he says a thing, it shall surely come to pass. This year, the Lord has told us that is a year of the supernatural. I am telling you, our eyes will see it. If you fail not, if you faint not, if you don't give up, your life will be a life of the supernatural. I am convinced, I am persuaded because I sense a level of grace that is coming upon the church. I sense a level of power that is coming upon the church. I sense a level of elevation that is coming upon the church. All that we need to do is to hold on to that hope so that it can fuel our faith. Be encouraged. This morning, the Lord is telling me to tell you, hope again. Hope again. It is not he that will it. It is not he that run it. It is God that showeth mercy. The battle is not for the strong. Neither men of understanding. The battle is not for swift, skillful men. No. It is God that make it happen. I want to encourage you. People of God, don't lose hope. Some of you, you have lost your loved ones. You have lost your job. You don't know what's going to happen after this. There are a lot of things going on in your mind. God, why this? Why that? It's these things that I'm looking forward for. My expectation, are they going to happen this year? The Lord has sent me to tell you, His promise will never fail. 
when he promised you, he will never fail you. He will make all things work together for you. If you lift up your hope in God, let me tell you, the Lord will never, ever disappoint you. He will never put you to shame. He will never put you to shame. Hold on to that hope. It will fuel your faith. The elders obtain a good report because of their faith. The disciples went through all sorts of persecution. They stood because of their faith. But I've come to understand it is because of the hope, the assurance they have in God. Their faith was energized. Their faith was strengthened that they were able, they were able to stand the test of time. I pray over you that your hope in God be strengthened. I see your hope rising. You are coming out of any hopeless situation because your hope has been lifted. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. If you are watching me right now, wherever you are watching from, we can never end this broadcast by giving you the opportunity to make Jesus the Lord over your life. Wherever you are watching me from, maybe you don't know what to do. Maybe you are thinking of ending your life because of what is happening. But you did not tune in by accident. God wanted to hear this. There is hope for the future. And this hope will come to you wherever you are when you make Jesus the Lord over your life. And I thank God that I've come your way. You are not hearing me. You are not listening to me. God himself is speaking to you. Give your life to him. He is the hope we are talking about. He is the answer for the world today. What is happening? And I'm telling you, when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. There is hope for you and your family. I want to pray with you. If you are there, say, Pastor, I'm willing to accept Jesus as Lord over my life. I want to pray with you. Whatever you are, say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for my life. I ask you today, forgive me all my sins. I know I am a sinner. But you came to die to save me. Today I declare be the Lord, be the King, be the Master over my life. I openly declare I receive you and accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I declare I am born again. Thank you Lord for saving me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are like that, I want to pray with you. Father, I pray for that man, for that woman, for that boy, for that girl, for that youth that I've given his or her life to Jesus. I ask you, Lord, strengthen them. Lead them in the path of righteousness 
for your name's sake. I pray that from this day forward, be their guide, be their shield, be their covering. I ask, oh God, any challenge, any storm, any heaviness, any pain in their lives, let it be lifted off them. But Lord, grant unto them the hope that comes from you. That from this day, may their life never be the same. Let them love you. They will serve you all the days of their life. I pray, establish their feet on a rock to stay. I declare them unmovable from that which they have trusted in from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you. I pray that look for wherever you are, a Bible-believing church. Connect will still come your way every Sunday, same time. Kingdom come temple, you can still connect to us and your life will never be the same. If the Lord has touched you and he wants us to know what the Lord has done, there's a number on the screen. Call and we'll pray with you. I pray that this new journey will change your life forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to pray for the sick. If you are sick in any part of your body, put your hand there. Father, I pray. Thank you, new, for everyone that is hearing me. You send forth your word and your word heal them. I declare, let your healing power touch them right now. From the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. I declare, heal them, touch their lives, restore them. In the name of Jesus. Lord, how I pray that you stretch your hand over that condition. And I command that devil of infirmity leave you right now. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Receive your total recovery and your total healing. In Jesus' name, I command every symptoms of COVID-19 leave you right now. Be gone right now. Be gone right now. Cough symptoms, leave right now. Fever symptoms, leave right now. Body pains, leave right now. In the name of Jesus, be gone by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I pray for the doctors. I pray for the nurses. I pray for those that are on front line. I ask, oh God, Preserve them. Keep them safe. Touch their lives. Touch their families. Bring a change. Bring a restoration in their lives. Use them, oh God, as a vessel to bring healing, to administer healing, to administer healing to those that are sick. In the name of Jesus, I pray for them also. Let their hope in you rise. 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 In the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, for the nations of the world. Bring healing. Bring recovery. Bring restoration. I pray for the economics of the world. Bring restoration. In the name of Jesus, Spirit of God, it will not be long that this pandemic will be over. We thank you because the victory has been won already. Be thou exalted and be thou praised. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you so much for watching. It's a blessing to come your way. And I know your life will never be the same. I want to give this few announcements. We are continuing. We are going to continue our prayer. It's, it's getting powerful and powerful every day. I want to encourage those of you who are not joining, join. It is time to pray. I'll say it again. It is time to pray. It is not time to be on the phone, on Facebook. It is time
to pray. And I want to encourage all of us, be part of it, and your life will never be the same. The time is the same from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Just one hour. You don't have any idea how God is preparing you for what is about to come. It is time to pray. 8 to 9, Monday to Friday. Be part of it and your life will never, ever be the same. We are yet to let this uh, pandemic die off and we'll organize the proper memorial service for our beloved pastor, Pastor Dave. So as the time goes by, definitely the family will give us a date that will work for all of us that we can be able to have a very beautiful, powerful memorial service for our beloved pastor so that everybody that Pastor Dave has touched one way or the other, they can come and pay their respect and also be a blessing to the family. Thank you so much for watching. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you his peace. May his countenance be risen upon you and your family. I declare your hope is lifted. I declare your hope is lifted. You are blessed and highly favored. May the Lord hide you under his pavilion, under his wings. No plague will come near your dwelling. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord bless you. We love you and thank you for watching. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bye.